It is April 1st, 2019. 11 p.m. on the car clock. I'm in my Prius, headed south on 57. My destination is Bullfrog Marina in Utah, on Lake Powell. Behind me, I have a camera store worth of stuff. I've got about 30 rolls of 3,200 foot rolls, 30 rolls of 200 feet of 16 millimeter film for my A minima. I've got my A minima, of course, and uh, a 4x5 camera Graflex. I've got about 130 sheets of 4x5 film. I've got my Kodak stereo camera and about 10 rolls of E100 VS and new E100. I've got my 35mm Nikon and uh, I've got an 8mm Bolex D8L and about 10 rolls of film for that, some 50D, some 250D and uh, I think I've got some E100 for the 8mm camera and then I've got a 16mm Bolex EL so that I can shoot, so I can have my cousin shoot uh, me with a Bolex shooting the 8mm Bolex for potential use in the Bolex documentary that Alexander Faber, Fav, Fav, I don't know how to pronounce his name, is shooting. And then I guess I've got about six rolls, six 100 foot rolls of 50D and 250D, a mixture of those six rolls for the Bolex camera. I've got my Sockler tripod, my Bogan tripod, and pretty much my entire apartment. Everything I own is in the Prius right now. So the last thing I purchased before leaving is four one pound bags of pistachios. Pistachios um, are very effective at keeping me awake. It takes a bit of brain power to peel and open the nuts to shell them and uh, so that it creates just enough brain activity to keep me awake. Um, as I mentioned, it's 11 p.m. and the drive to Bullfrog Marina is 22 hours and um, I'm going straight through because I have to be at the boat dock at 8 a.m. on Wednesday to go shoot Cathedral in the Desert uh, when it's sunny out because the rest of the week it's supposed to be cloudy. I've kind of got one shot at it and uh, if I don't get it I'm screwed because the lake level is going to inevitably start rising uh, next week probably. So the only alternative is to drive right through and I will be able to do that because of the four pounds of pistachios. So. I need each pound of pistachios to keep me awake for six, for six hours. Anyhow, I guess that's a lot of information, but what else am I going to do with my time than talk to my camera, right? So here we go. Well, it is 12.22 p.m. I've been on the road for an hour and 22 minutes, so I did have to stop in Decatur for fuel. I'm on the south side of Springfield Road right now, heading south on 55. Exciting. It is now 1.29 a.m. been out on the road for two hours and 29 minutes and over there in the dark is the east landing of the chain of rocks bridge I can't see it but it's there and I am about to cross the Mississippi River Mississippi River. And 
the bridge is right over there. I can't see it, but it's there. consumed about 20% of a bag of a one pound bag of pistachios so the pistachios are holding up well home solutions call 888-979-WAVE that's 888-979-WAVE or visit dryhousenow.com dryhousenow.com here it is the Missouri River it is there's a truss bridge here can't really see it too well in the dark. The MK, the Katy Trail is over there on the East Bank. Also can't see that. Time is 3.24 a.m. I'm about 40% of the way through my first bag of pistachios. Am I tired? A little bit. Well, back to driving. It is now 4.38 a.m. and the sun appears to be rising in the west. Obviously that's not what's happening though. There's so much light pollution in Kansas City that it kind of looks like the sun rising a little bit. Behind me it's still quite dark. Speaking of dark, I lost a headlight at 4.03 a.m. I was passing a truck and I accidentally let my wheel go beyond the fog line and I hit the rumble strip and uh, the headlight could not take the vibration of the rumble strip. So I'm down to one headlight. That's great. Uh, that'll cost me mm, half an hour to 45 minutes at some point today. But I'm not going to try to deal with it until the sun is up. So, that's about all I had to say about that. Uh oh, fuel light just came on. I guess I'm gonna stop and get some fuel. Son of a bitch! I lost my other headlight just now. I can only drive with my brights on. Shit, this is not good. So, I sure could go for a Walmart right now. I think Walmart has headlight bulbs. The right bulb is a bitch to replace. It's really hard to reach. This is not ideal. Man, this is gonna cost me. This is gonna cost me. And now I'm pissing off other drivers with my brights. I don't care for this situation. Oh well, whatever. Independence, Missouri, 4.58 a.m. I, uh, what's going on here with the headlights? I just got some fuel. And I have no headlights. There we go, brights are on. So I'm going to piss off everybody that I drive behind. And... Damn it. There's a median here. So I have to go to the Walmart, the nearby Walmart, and try to find some headlight bulbs. I guess I should be impressed that the uh, manufacturing tolerance tolerances on the uh, headlights are so close that 
they failed within 40 minutes of each other. That's astonishing that the mean time between failure is so close. Or that the time, the actual time between failure is so effing close. So, I'm gonna waste half an hour, 45 minutes, trying to find headlights, hopefully finding headlights, and installing them. This is a drag. On the other hand, this is probably about the most dangerous time of the morning for me to be driving, so this distraction is possibly in my best interest. Awesome. This isn't a real Walmart. It's a Walmart neighborhood market. And it's not open 24 hours. And I doubt they have headlights anyhow. Neighborhood market. WTF. All right, so I guess I'm gonna have to risk it on the risk running with brights on the interstate. Drat, right turn only out of that driveway. I can't figure out why all these cars are lined up here. There seem to be people sitting in these cars here. Oh, not all of them. That's weird. So. Wish I didn't have to drive with my brights on, blinding everybody. Five oh nine AM. Here is the Kansas City skyline. About a mile from no more like three miles. Two or three miles from the Welcome to Kansas sign. Nobody's retaliated yet for the bright lights. I don't know how long my luck's gonna hold out though. Fucking Christ. Alt 70. I don't want 35. I just, I want 70. I don't want alternate 70. Jesus Christ. That's bright. Alright, all I really want is a welcome to Kansas sign. My needs are simple. Okay, now I'm on 670. I don't know what happened to me there. Doesn't really matter. As long as it's got a 70 in it. Somebody please welcome me to Kansas. The sign's right up here after the road straightens out. Mile 1.6, that implies that the sign is a mile. 6 miles away. 
I know the moment I turn the camera off, I'm gonna go flying by it. Kansas City City Limit. I don't really come to Kansas City all that often. Maybe once every seven years on average. Seven twenty one AM. Nap time's over. I don't really remember what time I started. Hmm. Kansas. Not sure what else there is to say. Coming up on Hayes, Kansas. Kansas for my third fuel stop. First one was in Decatur, second was Independence, Missouri, and now I am in Oakley, Kansas. I'm hoping to find some headlight bulbs. 
the radio. You've also, heard a compelling ad for Noxitrel. The Pope doesn't look too promising. Enhancement pill. Men constantly reach out and ask me, does this Noxitrel really work? Or is it well, I may have to settle product? for a banana you shake at Sonic instead of headlight bulbs. I recommend this super pill to men everywhere. Noxitrel is the first all important. 11 13 a.m. now. I'm at Napa. I've replaced both headlights. And I'm ready to hit the road again. I'd say I spent about 10 minutes here. So I didn't lose too much time. I bought three bulbs. So. I can tolerate another, another burned out bulb without delay. Hopefully that won't happen. Finally, I'm done with Kansas. It is a long state. Welcome to colorful Colorado. Right, thank you, sign. The uh, mileage sign I saw right before the Welcome to Colorado sign said 176 miles to Denver. Oh, here's another one. 174 now. at Flagler, Colorado now. As you can see, there's a big grain elevator there. And a few miles back, I picked up the old Rock Island line. Here's a closer look at the line. There's evidence of recent tire replacement, so it's being maintained. And I've encountered two searchlight signals that are clearly not operational. It's kind of surprising that they're still still, uh, you know, complete unvandalized signals on the line. I did not notice if the signals had pinnacles or not, though. Hopefully I'll turn my camera on quickly enough to capture the next one. Here we have some grain hoppers. unit train. So they're just using the line for parking? I hope not. Arriba. Elevation 5228. Alright. Signals. There's some grain hoppers. Getting fairly close to Lyman, I think. Switch stand. Lyman two. So I don't know what this, I guess it dead ends in Lyman, so it must have been connected to something behind me. There's nothing north-south in Lyman that I can think of that it could connect to. I'm certain it doesn't go west of Lyman. I looked at that pretty carefully back in 2000 in September 2001 after I picked up my semaphores in Trinidad and Springer. Well, 
Maybe there's no more signals. This is compelling video here. It's got everything, suspense, drama, humor. Only all of that's really, really subtle. Possibly indetectable. So if I turn the camera off, I will immediately encounter signals. Oh, here we go. Okay, we're looking for pinnacles this time. Are there pinnacles? Oh, okay. So it's got the little, the kind of like miniature pinnacles that look like Arabian Hershey's Kisses. I'm surprised those those survived. I mean, they're not particularly desirable, but they do show up on eBay. All right, well, I don't think there's really much else to see. So I'm gonna turn the camera off. Here's a couple more. There were two a few miles back at a town called Bovina. Two more. Uh, Lyman is still a little ways off, it turns out, like maybe about eight or ten miles. I guess I could just assume that all the block signals are intact, or most of the block signals are intact. And I probably won't try to shoot the rest of them. This is Genoa and Hugo. I just passed Denver International Airport. Well, I passed Penny Boulevard, which is the road to Denver International Airport. And it's very murky, hazy, cloudy today. You can barely make out the front range. Uh, it's kind of disappointing. I always like to see the mountains here. And it's a bummer when I can't. And hey, screw you for cutting me off, by the way, pickup truck. Anyhow, I'm getting a little deja vu from all the trips out here to see my mom last year before she died. Whatever, I hope the air clears up. Obligatory skyline shot. About to cross 25, and I'll be headed up into the mountains. I'm still on 70 westbound. I will be for quite a while. The time is 2.49 central time, so it's 1.49 here. And as you can see, I'm about to go through the Morrison Cut. Once I'm through the Morrison Cut, I will officially be in the mountains. The cut is very interesting because... Whoa, what's that guy doing? The kind of upended strata is... Um, Really quite cool. The lighting is not doing it justice today. There you go. See the strata is at about a 45 degree angle, and there's all kinds of stuff there. I think there might actually be a little vein of like carbon or coal there. So now we're in the mountains. I think I'll stop at Idaho Springs and grab breakfast, lunch. Yep, that sounds like a plan. I just saw a sign that said Grand Junction 232, moments after passing through the Morrison Cut. 
it's conceivable that I could make it to the Welcome to Utah sign before sundown. And that makes me not want to stop at Idaho Springs and eat. So I think what I'll do is eat, go to the bathroom, and fuel all at the same time when my tank is empty. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Just passed the 6 interchange and picked up Clear Creek on the left. Whoa. 3.03 p.m. Central. I guess I should pick a lane. I picked the right lane. Idaho Springs should be just a few miles. What does it say? Three miles. Springs, and how did I manage to drive by the Argo Mill without noticing it? I didn't. There it is. Argo Mill. So the Argo Mill is at the end of a, a drift or drifts that connect um, underground with mines in Clear Creek County, or Gilpin County. Gilpin County? Yeah. So mines over by Central City are connected, or were connected by drifts, underground horizontal tunnels, to the mill. So they didn't have to haul their ore up out of their, up out of their mines and drag it over here. They just brought it here through the tunnel. Pretty sneaky. Bad framing. All right, come and go. I don't need gas just yet, though. Coming into Georgetown. There's been a lot of development here. downhill end of the Georgetown Loop Railroad is pretty far away from town. The railroad just kind of, there's a tailings pile over there. The railroad used to kind of work its way up the uh, side of the mountain there. Um, you know, on the far side, kind of went around the, went around the town. The station was never in town. The station was down by the interchange and the trains backed into it, I think. These Jersey Bears kind of suck, you can't see anything. I'm sure the Georgetown Loop Railroad is not operating at this time of year. I think they start in May. See darn thing, the loop is right over there. Those of you with x ray vision can see it through the wall. the railroad tracks. There are the railroad tracks. And here's the, here are the railroad buildings. The shop and whatnot. Boy, it really stinks that you can't see anything from the interstate anymore. It's not good. 
good for marketing. There's a fair amount of snow up there. I wouldn't be too surprised if A Basin wasn't open, or at least partially open. The outside temperature is 43 degrees. Hard to say. I have not seen any skis. On cars. Coming up on the exit for Loveland Pass and you can barely see ski runs there. Kinda looks like there's not 100% covered in snow at the lower elevations though. I don't see any movement. I don't see any skiers. Actually, I'm not even sure that's a ski area. That might just be a bunch of slides. Those are very, those will be very steep runs. But we'll see in a second. I can't really remember. Hay Basin is way at the top of Loveland Pass, so I don't know what ski area this would be. I'm a little sleep deprived, by the way. Yeah, that is not a ski area. Strike that clip. Approaching the Eisenhower Tunnel. Oops. 50 miles an hour, I better slow down. I'll get the camera back up after I pass the cop. Okay. Ah, ski lifts. They're running. The ski lifts are running. Cool. I don't see any skiers though. I don't see a single skier. The snow doesn't look awful. The outside temperature is 38 degrees. And at this elevation, the freezing point would be higher than 32 degrees. Right? Scrubbing. I'd volunteer, but I don't have the time. the fluorescence with LEDs. I might need to slow down. Grade next seven miles. <sighs> this might be a good place to use two hands for driving.
Vale now. I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not, but back at Copper Mountain, it appeared that all the lifts were running and there were plenty of skiers and snowboarders on the slopes. The temperature was like 42 or something like that. I would have liked to go to skiing. The Tennessee Pass line is over there on the left. Um, maybe about two miles back, <clears throat> the rail was up against the right wall of the canyon behind the camera. And there were some places where the track was covered with slide debris. And I thought I saw a pair of bridge abutments without a bridge. And um, that concerns me very much. Once the line gets severed in a couple places, it's going to be really expensive to uh, bring back into service. Everywhere you look in this state, they're scraping and scratching to build new stuff. It's, it's really awful. It's like non-stop development, apparently all the way to Glenwood Canyon. Yuck. It's just get it's just being ruined. Now approaching dot zero where the Moffat line and the Tennessee Pass line join. It's nice to see that this valley hasn't been infested with cheap ass condos. Dot zero refers to the origin point for the survey of the state of Colorado. So they started with a blank piece of paper, they drew a dot, and they wrote zero next to it. There's the Moffat line. Amtrak runs on those tracks. They um, drew a dot, they wrote zero next to it, and that's where they started the survey of the state of Colorado. There's the Colorado River joining the Eagle River, and I was wrong about the valley not being infested with crappy condos. There they are. And I bet there was a gas station there. Well, I should have plenty to make it through Glenwood Canyon. It's not that far. I don't think I've been through Glenwood Canyon in a car since 1992, February of 1992. I'd kind of like to stop at the uh, at the dam there where there's the segment of the old segment of Tulane Highway but I don't really feel like I have the time. Not if I want to get my shot. Granted, uh, Glenwood Springs 18 miles. Wow, that's just kind of at the limit of what I can do with the fuel I have. I visited Glenwood Springs was April of 1983, I think April 24th. After riding the last westbound run of the Rio Grande Zephyr. I take that back. The first time I went through Glenwood Springs was in 1976 on a family vacation, although I'm not sure we necessarily stopped in Glenwood Springs. Now we're entering Glenwood Canyon. So, work zone. That's probably related to the slides that were reported on the national news recently. The 
this four lane road through Glenwood Canyon is tragic and offensive. There used to be a little two lane road that hugged the edge of the canyon, more or less where I'm driving now, but um, anyhow, this is just awful. All this damage occurred, damage occurred in like 84, 85, 86. Four lane road does not belong here. Should have tunneled around it or something. Damage to the guardrail back there. Tracks are right on the other side. You get a nice view of the canyon from the other side. You get a nice view of the ugly four lane road from the other side. gradient is very apparent there. hasn't figured out a way to deface Glenwood Canyon. I don't see much development. I'm just fine with that. Forty-six Central Time, three forty-six Mountain Time. I don't know when sunset is. I don't think I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna get my shot of the Utah sign. So right now the eastbound lanes are sort of like below us. There's the eastbound lane. There are the eastbound lanes. Right in here is where I got the shot of the helicopter above uh, the tracks as the Zephyr was about to pass in 1983. Right here is a helicopter. in Passenger Train Journal. And then here's the tunnel that... Wait, what? Okay, so they've made some changes here. I think. No, I think I'm just getting senile. Anyhow, but there's a major tunnel that crosses sort of an oxbow and orphans the, uh, the old road but the old road by the dam this is just off I hope 
hopefully get started on the four lane road through the Grand Canyon soon. That is sorely needed. Okay, what's up with your lanes your lane selection, dude? Man's a rockin', don't come a knockin'. surprisingly bumpy in the tunnel. I don't get that. Alright, here we go. Dams that way. We just crossed the river. There are the railroad tracks. Not a lot of water flowing. There will be when that 138% snowpack starts melting off. Upper Colorado snowpack is at 138% of average right now. At least it was yesterday when I checked the website. It's longer than I remember. Let's see, 352. I guess we probably just missed the eastbound or the westbound. I can't remember which is first. One of them does something around 3 o'clock. I guess it's the westbound that's at 3 o'clock. The eastbound would have to be... I don't know. I don't remember the schedule anymore. Thank you. 
There used to be an incredible model of a dome car over here on a kind of a pedestal and it got stolen a couple times but now it's in the um, at the Colorado State Railroad Museum in Golden. I'd say it was about six feet long. So it's coming up on 5 o'clock Central Time, 4 o'clock um, Mountain Time. I have to decide whether I'm going to continue the race to the border to get a, sign, a, shot, a shot with poor lighting of the Welcome to Utah sign, or if I'm going to stop in Glenwood Springs and relax and eat, and then resume my journey. I guess since my default is to be in a rush, I'll continue rushing. expected it to have been torn down. Alright, that's the end of this shot. There's a 
there's a rather astonishing landslide here. That's just west of Glenwood Springs. I'm looking logical south. All right, so now I hurry. What's up with this? Drugs or something, I guess. So parachute is not immune to development. This house is all over the place here. I think, you know, 20 years ago, there wasn't a single structure up there. Yuck. It's raining in the upper Colorado basin. This is not desirable. Closing in on Grand Junction, I think. <coughs> 627 Central now. And if I recall correctly, this big uh, Mesa Butte thing uh, is just east of the airport. And on the other side is So, well, so on this side is nothing, on the other side is the airport, and then beyond that is Grand Junction. Again, it is 6.28 Central Time, 5.28 Local Time. I don't think I'm going to get the sign shot. Doesn't look like I'm going to have the light I need. And it's raining. I don't go out when it rains. As promised. There's the Mesa, and the airport is up there, and Grand Junction is ahead. Sweet. Grand Junction is kind of just along the highway here. It's like a long, skinny thing sandwiched between the highway and the river. I kind of feel like going downtown for a second, but I really can't afford the time. By the way, I'm in Utah. I was looking for a Welcome to Utah sign, and there was never, there, was, there wasn't one. What's up with that? So I'm, let's see, what exit is this? Two? So I guess I'm two miles inside Utah? No, I'm further than that. These exit numbers must just be sequential, not mile post numbers. No, nope, there's a mile post. So I'm two miles inside Utah, and nobody was here to greet me. No sign, nothing. So I guess I got about 60 miles to Green River, and then, I don't know, I think it's about 15 miles to the, 10 or 15 miles to the Hanksville exit. I'm probably about two hours from, what do you call it? Bullfrog, maybe slightly more. Whatever. I'm really confused. The, mile mar the miles are going down, and here's the actual Utah border. That's why there was no sign before, because I wasn't in Utah. What does that say? Leaving colorful Colorado. I know I'm leaving colorful Colorado. I want a welcome to Utah sign. Welcome to Utah sign. Where's the welcome to Utah sign? Oh, there it is. Perfect. Nice background lighting too. Wow, that's gonna, I think that might work out okay. Okay, well, that took me an inordinate amount of time in 40 feet of film. 
but I think I got a shot that I'm gonna like. We'll see. Now it's time to get to the motel. I left Champagne um, 12, uh, 18 and a half hours ago. I've slept 45 minutes in that time. I'm tired. Well, that's a first. I just saw a yellow diamond caution sign that said Eagles on Highway. And uh, I, earlier in the day, I heard that the Eagles were doing two concerts in Las Vegas. And combining the two, I'm expecting to find a rock performance somewhere along the road here in progress. Now entering Green River, Utah. The first time I came here was 1976 to board a raft with Ken Slate and some other people. I think there's a Walgreens I need to get a SDHC card. Now entering Green River, Utah. It's a pretty small town. There's a lot more happening now than there was when I first came in 1976. I can't remember if there's a Walgreens or not. I forgot to get a blank SDHC card for my digital camera and Walgreens would have those but if there's no Walgreens I don't know what I'm going to do. The hardware store is probably closed. They have a good little hardware store in town but it's probably closed. The uh, river guide place is back there in those huts and things behind the motel. Holiday is the name of the company. When I was here in 1976, I went with Ken Slate, though, not with Holiday. The boat launch is right, right over there. Um, there's a park, and there's a truss bridge where the Rio Grande Railroad crosses the river. That's where you put in for float trips down the green. No way the hardware store is going to be open. There's the truss bridge right there. Kind of hard to see, but I saw it. I suppose a truck stop could have an SDHC card. Look at this sign. That's from the pre interstate era when a Highway 6 was the. Uh, No, I, was it a hardware store or was it that expanded gas station that I visit, visited last time to buy batteries? Oh, here it is, hardware store. And it does not look open as predicted. Oh, maybe it is open. Where's the curb cut? I don't know. Walgreens would be better. It is 7.24. It really seems unlikely that the hardware store would be open at 7.24. But I don't really know the habits of Utah people. So I'll just check it out. As expected, the hardware store was actually closed. Here's an interesting place. Wow, it's really decayed. Nice missile. Sleepy Hollow Motel. Uh, appears to be closed. Nice sign though. So I'm supposed to go down here and turn left and go to something in Vine grocery store. Oh, look at the neat uh, sort of atomic era looking sign thing there. 
Okay, so, oh, right, 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 the market. Melon vine. This tavern's pretty good. I like it. Good burgers. All right. Oh. Look, well, this building hasn't fallen down yet. Check it out. It's leaning like, I don't know, five, seven degrees. I'm surprised it's still up. All right, here I go. I've acquired the necessary memory card, as well as a tube of bagels and a bottle or a jar of peanut butter. So I am in good shape. I've not seen a single train today on the Rio Grande tracks, which just it seems unusual to me. I would have expected to see several. Huh. I'm running behind schedule. It is now 9.17 Central Time. I had hoped to be at Bullfrog by 9 p.m. Central Time. That would have been 22 hours from my departure time. So I am 17 minutes late. But I also have a ways to go. So it looks like I'm probably going to be about an hour off. And that's roughly the amount of time that I wasted doing stupid shit today. Um, taking pictures of the Glenwood Springs train station, uh, running down uh, the SD card, and um, uh, uh, sunblock and other things like that that I should have done ahead of time. So I guess I can kind of rationalize that <clears throat> I really am on time, even though I'm not. How's that sound? It is April 3rd, 2019. We are on Lake Powell at Bullfrog Marina, trying to find our way out through the tire maze. The exit seems to be over there. The weather is pure, just perfect. The temperature is good, the sun is good, a few clouds to make pictures interesting. And I don't think we could ask for more. Our first stop is going to be Cathedral in the Desert, and I'm not really sure what to expect there. I'm sure it's going to be cool.